Have you ever noticed how one red trade ruins your mood for the entire day but one green trade makes you feel invincible and also how after one green trade it's easier for you to call it for the day because you are green but that's not the same case after a red trade you always feel like trading more trying to make it green after red trades and also how losing $100 feels way worse than the pleasure of making $100 why does this actually happen these are not just emotions that's literally your brain chemistry messing with you and in this video i will break down on what actually happens inside your head after a loss after a win and most importantly how to hack it so that your brain doesn't control your trading i have personally listened to thousands of hours of podcasts read dozens of books on trading and in this video i will condense everything so that it's easier for you guys we will first start with what happens to your brain after a red trade then after a green trade and counter moves you should have in your trading arsenal to make it as a trader let's start with what happens to your brain after a red trade when you take a loss your brain doesn't treat it lightly it reacts as if you're under threat cortisol that stress hormone shoots up and suddenly you are not thinking straight you know how neuroscience says that losing $100 feels two or three times worse than the pleasure of making $100 that's why a small red trade feels heavier than it should and here's what happens in trading the logical part of your brain shuts down and the survival driven part takes over that's when you're staring at the screen clearly seeing the trend go against you but you just can't hit the exit button because you're in the fight or flight mode it's not because you don't see it it's because your body is flooded with the stress chemistry telling you to hold on like your life depends on it and at the same time your dopamine levels the chemical that gives you motivation and focus it crashes it's like this you enter a trade and dopamine rises with the anticipation of it being a green trade right here many people feel that dopamine rises after a green trade but no it rises in the anticipation of a green trade and trust me no one is trading to lose money so if you are taking a trade to make money your dopamine is going to go up in the anticipation of a green trade but now what happens if it's a red trade so your dopamine rises slightly in the anticipation of a green trade if you are trading to make money but if it's a red trade your dopamine won't just come back to baseline it's going to go under the baseline and this is the aftermath of a red trade this is the valley that you see in the dopamine and that's why the losses just feel so damn heavy now your brain wants that dopamine back so what do you do you force trades you take setups you had normally ignored and you size up thinking that you're going to make it back because this is your brain speaking to you your brain just wants your dopamine to come back to baseline or go slightly up because no one likes being in this dopamine deficit and here's the truth because when your dopamine is in a dopamine deficit at that point you're not trading the market anymore you're trading your brain chemistry your brain just wants your dopamine to come back to baseline just to feel good just to have some motivation just to have some focus so that's not the market telling you to take a trade or your playbook telling you to take a trade or not to take a trade you're just acting because of your brain chemistry and this is exactly why a one red trade can snowball into a full red day not because your setup suddenly stopped working but because you are making decisions from a place of stress and deficit your logic is off line it has left the chat your fear center is running the show and that's when the rules get tossed losers don't get cut and size goes through the roof because you're just trying to make the losses back not even the losses you're trying to make the dopamine back and that is exactly how traders blow up accounts not because of the market but because they just couldn't get control back from their own brain now let's talk about what happens after a green trade when you hit a green trade it feels amazing the rush you get that's dopamine flooding your system but here's the catch it's not about the money itself that creates the biggest spike it's the anticipation that actually starts the spike in the dopamine the uncertainty the idea that this trade might be the big one that's going to make or break your career it's going to make you and set you for the year that's why the markets can feel so addictive they work exactly like a slot machine and your dopamine increases in the anticipation of of hitting the jackpot at the slot machine. Now let's see what happens with the dopamine after a green trade. So when you take a trade in the anticipation of that trade being a green trade because as I mentioned everyone trades to make money. So whenever you take a trade whether it's a green trade or red trade your dopamine is going to go slightly up in the anticipation of that trade being a green trade. And this peak also depends on how much you're making on that trade. For example on a usual trade you make $500. On that trade you make $5000. Your dopamine is going to see a huge peak. And after that big win of making $5000 you start thinking that you have cracked the code that you can do no wrong your confidence is through the roof and without even realizing it you start pushing adding size chasing setups you wouldn't normally touch taking trades way outside your game plan and you will start pushing size on each and every setup out there even if it's an a setup or a b setup or a c minus setup and every trader goes through these cycles i have been at this peak multiple times in my career and that's why most of the consistent traders including me they say that your biggest losses are followed by your biggest wins 
because that's your brain chemistry again. For example, you catch a big win on Tesla or NVIDIA and instead of being satisfied, you feel this urge to go at it again. That's not the strategy talking, that's your dopamine pulling you back to the table and trying to hit the jackpot again. And the thing about dopamine curve is that this peak is very addictive. I have been here multiple times and trust me when I say that, I have seven years of experience now. The first time I got this peak by only making $500. I still can't surpass that feeling because when you come back to baseline, this peak is very addictive. So now the first time it took you $500 to reach that peak, the next time it's going to need $1,000 to reach the same peak again because you won't get that same high again with just $500 because that's normal for you now. So that is actually closer to the baseline. So the $500 is going to be here after a while after you get enough experience. So now the next time I want to make $1,000 to get to that peak again. But again, this peak is very addictive. So your brain actually wants to surpass that peak. So you want to make $1,500. Once you make $1,500, you want to make $5,000. Once you make $5,000, you want to make $15,000, then $50,000. And that is a journey of each and every trader out there because we are always trying to chase this peak and this peak keeps on getting higher and higher and higher. And now if you actually think about this curve, this is how traders get back their morning profits by the afternoon. For example, you make $500 in the morning session. Now what happens after making that money, after a few minutes, after a few hours, your dopamine is slowly going to come back to baseline. This is a time axis. If you just give it enough time, your dopamine is going to come back to baseline. Whether it's a peak or whether it's a valley, just time is gonna bring your dopamine back to baseline. So now what happens? You make $500 in the morning, maybe until the afternoon 1 p.m. your dopamine is slowly coming down, but you want that hit again. Your brain is looking for that hit. So you're gonna start over trading and most likely give back the profits that you made in the morning because your brain is just trying to chase that high again. Now this is very similar to a drug addict. Once you take one shot, after a few hours, it's going to come back to baseline slowly and steadily. So you want another shot, you want another shot. And the same thing happens in gambling. Once you gamble, you make some money maybe, you got lucky. The next day, you go again, you lose money. The following day, you go again, you lose money. Because your brain is not trying to make that money. It's just trying to get that dopamine peak. So the danger with the green trade isn't just the win itself. It's the illusion it creates that you are in control. You know what you're doing. Your confidence is through the roof. But in reality, your brain chemistry is under control, not you. And unless you are a aware of that, a green trade might be more dangerous for your trading than a red one. So now that you know how dopamine controls your trading, let's actually talk about steps to counter this. And before we discuss that, like this video, subscribe to my channel if you are new for amazing trading content. We are posting a lot of really good content on this channel for beginner to intermediate to advanced traders, including live trade recaps. So if you are new, subscribe to my channel. It only takes two seconds and it actually helps out the channel a lot. So now that you know how your brain works, what do you do about all of this? You can't stop your brain from releasing dopamine or cortisol that's the physiology and biology of your brain but you can set up routines that keep you from letting it hijack your trading and the first thing is having a good daily routine i'm a big believer of that and i have been talking about this since forever on my channel for me it's cardio playing squash playing paddle with my friends journaling sometimes even just a walk with my dog simple stuff but it balances your brain chemistry if you come into the market already fried from your previous win or loss one loss or one win will throw you all over the place and your dopamine is going to be all over the place. If you actually want to know more about my daily routine, go and follow me on Instagram because I actually post a lot of behind the scenes of a trader, of a consistent trader on my Instagram. The link will be in the description box below. And now the second hack is really simple and it's time. Dopamine always comes back to baseline. If you look at the dopamine curve again, in the anticipation of a green trade, dopamine is going to go up. After a green trade, it's going to shoot up. After a big red trade, it's going to shoot back down. But but it's always going to come back to baseline if you just give it enough time. That's why we have time on the x-axis and dopamine on the y-axis. So what happens after a big red day? It might take you maybe a few days to come back to baseline. If it's a small red day, it might take you a few hours to come back to baseline. But you are going to come back to baseline if you just give it enough time. And the same thing happens after a green day. If you make $500, depending on your account, your dopamine might go until here it might take a few hours to come back to baseline whereas if you make five thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars or five hundred thousand dollars depending on your level of trading it might take you a few days it might take you a few weeks to come back to baseline that is why just time 
give it enough time and the dopamine is gonna come back to baseline. So what this means is that if you just took a massive hit, you're gonna feel empty, you're gonna feel frustrated, that's normal, but don't fight it. With more trades, let the chemistry settle, just give it time. Same with the green trade, don't chase that high, let your brain level down again, let your brain settle down again, let your dopamine come back to baseline and sometimes the best trade is just to take a step away. And that is the exact reason I recently had my hottest streak. I made approximately $150,000 in four trading days and after that I started making stupid mistakes. I started sizing up on stupid trades and that is why I took a vacation. I just went to Bali. I actually discussed about this exact thing in my Bali vacation blog. I'm going to make sure to link that video towards the end of this video. So if you are interested in dopamine and trading, I think that video is a must watch after this one. And now the third step to avoid your brain chemistry taking control of your own trading is to get off your setup early. I'm usually done within the first one or two hours of the market open. That's when the cleanest move happened for me and the volume is really high because I'm a momentum trader. And it actually stops me from getting sucked into that over trading cycle later in the day. Doesn't matter if you're green or red within the first two hours, your dopamine is either at a peak or a valley. So getting off early and giving your brain time, which is the second step, just to give it time, just increases the odds of your dopamine mean coming back to baseline for the next trading session. You don't need to sit there for 8 hours trying to catch each and every move in the market. Trading is not like Pokemon, you can't catch them all. The longer you stay, the more chances your brain has to trip you up and get into that revenge trading and over trading cycle. And now the fourth hack, which is actually the best hack, I preserve the best for the last, is that I mentioned dopamine rises in the anticipation of a green trade. So then you have to kind of rewire your brain to stop anticipating. <laughs> so what I mean is that when you enter a trade, you don't know what the outcome will be. It can be a nice A plus playbook setup, but you might still lose money. So instead of anticipating a green trade, anticipate that you kind of lost the risk that you already put in that trade. So for example, I took a trade and my anticipation is that I'm going to make $500 on that trade. So now the dopamine increases in the anticipation of making $500, even though I still haven't made $500. But if in case that trade is a loss and I lose $100, my dopamine actually comes under the baseline. And you guys can see one thing that this valley is kind of more than this peak, even though my anticipation was making $500. 500 is bigger than the loss, that is $100. And that's why I said, the loss hurts way more than the profit. So for example, if you lose $100, it's gonna hurt you way more than the pleasure you gain from making $100. And now the distance between this is kind of similar, even though your anticipation is making $500 and your loss is $100, in theory, this should be smaller, but it's kind of the same. So now what I mentioned is that instead of anticipating making $500, you need to anticipate that you did not make anything and you're risking $100 on that trade. So if you stop anticipating a green trade, which is very difficult to do, I'm still struggling with this until this day after seven years of trading, because whenever I take a playbook setup, in my head, I start dreaming about the $50,000 day, the $100,000 day, it's very difficult, but you need to rewire your brain to think in terms of risk, not reward. That, okay, I'm taking this trade, I'm risking $100 to see what happens. So in that case, if you're not anticipating a big green trade, your dopamine won't see that initial spike. The spike might be only this much, or maybe if you're anticipating a red, which is very difficult to do, it might actually be here. You won't see this big peak and you won't see this big valley. So if you are able to normalize this curve, it's gonna be really helpful for your own trading. And that is the fourth hack. Stop anticipating and avoid big peaks and avoid big valleys. Also, one thing that helps me is an exercise I learned from the book, The Daily Trading Coach by Dr. Bredenstein Barger. Draw two thermometers to measure your emotional temperature. One is gonna measure your frustration temperature and the second one is gonna measure your confidence temperature. Now, every day before trading, you rate both of these out of 10. If frustration is high, you're going to note it down as 8 or 9 or 10. And if the confidence is high, you're going to do the same. But now there's a misconception that your frustration needs to be zero. Your frustration needs to be zero and confidence needs to be high for that is 10 for you to trade well, which is wrong because that means your dopamine is way higher than what it's supposed to be. You're overconfident. So ideally your confidence needs to be around seven to nine and your frustration needs to be between zero to three for you to be in this zone. So that just means that you are trading out of your own playbook and not because of your dopamine being at a peak or at a valley. If you want a copy of 
of this emotional temperature, there will be a link in the description box below. Simply enter your email and we will send it out to you. It's going to be a PDF, so you can print out the PDF or you can just use your phone to mark out your frustration temperature and confidence temperature. So yeah, the link will be in the description box below. So look, at the end of the day, you are not managing your trades. You're managing yourself. That's your job as a trader. If you can control your chemistry, if you can step back, reset and not let dopamine dictate your decisions, that's when you actually start trading with consistency and making money from trading. The one thing that you should not step back from is smashing the like button on this video, subscribe to this channel if you are new and I will see you guys in the next one.